This show is a long time coming ever since we reconnected at our friend Paul and Christina's wedding about a year ago. Yori, Hello. it's great to see you. Good to see you too, my man. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on your second company being launched. We're going to talk about all of that and more today. After gaining experience first as a marketing director for Lahua Brands, he set out on his own. He recently launched a second company. He has one in jewelry, now one in clothing. He's out yep. in California. He's doing big, big things. Yorgi, how long has this second company been in the works? So it's actually a pretty cool story. It, uh, August 18th, I was sitting on uh, my couch right over here, drinking wine with a buddy. And we were just kind of talking about success, uh, the success of Mansion, kind of about life um and kind of the route we wanted to go and i was like bro listen like i have this really like cool idea like i've always wanted to start a clothing company like mansion kind of gave me uh the confidence to do it now i have the i have the suppliers i have the distributors like uh, i have the team and uh you know he's a retired hockey player um you know one stanley cup and he's like dude like fuck it let's run it and then ever since then like it was go time he hit me up the next day he's like just so you know i bought uh the uh domain for blank label at the time when he bought it, we didn't spell it how we spell it now. So we had to go back and rebuy it. But I mean, since then, it was up every night till two, uh, talking to my suppliers, kind of formulating a plan. Um, I did a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting for the company um, just because I, it's like, you know, I had two partners I was going to bring on, but I didn't want to distract them with Mansion. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, let me get the brand developed. Let me get the products. And then when the time came... I pulled the trigger, um, you know, offer equity in the company and they were, you know, they're excited to join um, Blank Label. And we launched about 10 days ago and we've had crazy success and I'm uh, really, really stoked on it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's shout out these websites, the social media. We'll do it again at the end of the show. But while we're talking about it. Yeah. So uh, BlankLabel.com, um, you know, we are a clothing brand out of Los Angeles that highlights the coast of Los Angeles. Uh, you have Mansion, uh, Mansion.com, M-A-N-S-S-I-O-N.com. It stands for Man on a Mission. Uh, we offer premium men's jewelry. Um, and then you have Lahua Brands, which uh, if you're a cannabis user, uh, we're doing some pretty cool industry-leading things uh, in terms of beverages, coming out with a new vape brand as well. Um, but yeah. You're a busy guy. I love it. Extending yeah. yourself now into not a completely new field, but from jewelry to clothing. If everybody is new to your first company as well. Catch them up with a nice uh, description of what you do there. So Mansion, that was, uh, that was a big risk taker. You know, um, we make men's premium jewelry, uh, but pretty much at the time when my two buddies had started the company, I think they had like designed a box and I met with them um, at a hockey game or met with one of my buddies at a hockey game. He's like, yo, I'm starting this company. And it was weird because I was in a crossroads in my life where I was like, I was selling liquor at the time. I was a liquor rep actually. Um, and I could kind of just get a feeling where my life was going to go. And like, I had a cool job and, but it was just more like, it's going to be a nine to five. Like at least it's in liquor, but I was like kind of getting like, I don't want to say a victim mentality where I wanted a handout, but yeah. like, okay. Like I had people in the industry, uh, in the liquor industry, like hopefully, you know, I can get like work my way up, do all that. And then, you know, this opportunity came about, my buddy is like, yeah, starting a jewelry brand. This is what it is. And I just was like, dude, can I join? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I love your style. He's like, you got it. Um, we all put in five thousand um, dollars, and you know, we're a multi-million dollar company now, and it's and it's awesome. Um, but we offer anything from you know string wax bracelets to solid gold, um, and we actually were in uh, in the end of August. We will be launching like a diamond line as well. So um, we're making some noise. We've made a lot of noise, uh, like a market disruptor in the jewelry industry. I love it. We'll keep going. I look forward to hearing about the next diamond release. Have to put it on the pages for you so everybody can get caught up with that. But from when you were working with liquor, now you're working on your own. Different situation. What are some of the more challenging parts of being on your own? Knowing when to turn it off. Like I go and and that's all my partners are. And it's, uh, it's, it's challenging to turn it off. I work Monday through Sunday, every day till two. I mean, you know me, I like to have my fun, of course. Um, but no, but when I'm not out partying, when I'm not working, you need to, there needs to be a time where you're just chilling, you know, and you got to really uh, know when that time is. Um, it's challenging too is uh, lean on your partners. Like a lot of people are so, um, you know, so headstrong and just doing it themselves. 
you know, the more you start to have teammates and lean on your partners, the easier your life will become. And you, you know, I think when I'm looking at it from like a CEO perspective, like I have my generals and my generals know how to do their job really well. Like that's the way my CEO with Mansion looks at me. It's like, I'm his uh, branding general, his creative general. Like I'm going to lead him in the way. Um, then as far as like my cannabis job, it's like, I have to stay in parameters because I have no ownership in any of those companies. So uh, it keeps me, it keeps me very focused and um, I can't do whatever I want. I love that. And we can't be great at everything. So finding people who supplement your strengths, get those weaknesses for you. That's just so important. And it seems to be working out really, really well for you. Let's now hop into the spotlight story before we bring you back and learn which entrepreneur throughout history the orgy would choose to sit down with dead or alive to pick their brain. But since we have someone who is into this clothing game, we're going to look at an article from Forbes titled How to Start a Clothing Business, Everything You Need to Know. And you can scroll down in the show description to follow along with us. We'll touch on some of the article's points and then bring him back on for good. But before we get to that, I am excited to share that this summer's episodes will be brought to you in part by speaker coach Cesar Cervantes. Specializing in helping you get your transformative message to the TEDx stage. Guaranteed to schedule your free brainstorming session. Visit the link in the show description or CesarCervantes.tv. If you have a passion for fashion, starting a clothing business might be a great way to turn your skills and creativity into a career. It's more accessible than ever for new business owners to sell their wares online and turn a profit. There are a variety of ways to sell clothes, find, from finding collaborators and wholesalers to providing great items for excited customers. Here are some things you should know about starting a clothing business from start to finish, and then we'll get our guest take on it. Find your niche, know your audience, create a marketing plan, name your brand and create brand assets, register your business, design and source products, price your products, then distribute, market, and so forth. I want to dive into finding your niche. The fashion industry is massive, consisting of a ton of different brands, all with very different styles. It's important to identify your niche and stick to it. This will help you to create a product line that resonates with your target market and build a solid brand. Remember that as appealing as it may try to be to give everything to everyone, the best brands have a designed niche and they stay in that niche. We look at Wrangler with Casual, Adidas, Athletic. Yorgi, what would you say your company's falling under? Uh, as far as for my clothing brand, it is just, uh, it's coastal leisure. Like there's a lot, especially the reason I designed this brand was, in fact, I was, I was so sick of all these brands coming out of Los Angeles. They were all focused on like Beverly Hills and who's the next influencer to wear it. And uh, on my tags, it says made by friends for friends. Uh, and I really just wanted to uh, create a brand that represented the coast of where I grew up um, in a style that, you know, that's been around since the seventies, you know, it's mm -hmm. chill, it's relaxed, but it's good quality. Um, and this brand isn't for your influencers. I'll just say that like this brand, I care more about my customers and having a good quality product. I don't care who's wearing it. I definitely feel like you just talked about your niche. You talked about knowing your audience. Now the article also talked about creating a marketing plan where after defining your niche and identifying your audience, it is the next step to put together a marketing plan. While it sounds like a lot of work, it doesn't have to be very comprehensive, but you do need to know when it comes to details, when it comes to how you plan to sell your products, how you're gonna market it to get sales. Here's a few of the must haves when creating a new business plan, marketing competition, distribution channels, marketing strategy, marketing budget. Those are just a few. Yorgi, can you add some insight here, some expertise from your experiences here? Yeah. Yeah. So this is where one of my partners really came into play. Actually, both of them do because one handle SMS email. We've done mm -hmm. it with and, and uh, they've actually kind of turned careers into it. Uh, uh, quick background. One of my partners was a cop. Now he's an advertiser. Made, uh, uh, he put me in a cop, and one of the most successful advertisers. So I had that in my back pocket. Uh, my other partner, Frost, um, he was in product development. Uh, I might have gotten that wrong, but a uh, very smart guy, but he got into email and SMS. And now he uh, has a partner with his own, uh, he has a partner in an agency and they provide that with companies. So those are very uh, important levers to pull. So Tori does our Facebook, Instagram advertising. Um, and let me put it this way. People are afraid of chat GPT. Chat GPT is afraid of him. Like he's that good. 
And, uh, you know, for us, that's email SMS. Like you need to pull on those levers uh, for S email and SMS. Um, that's a cheap way to get reoccurring customers. And then you have to show your brand somehow. So that's why Tori, uh, who does her Instagram, Facebook advertising is so valuable. So those were the levers I pulled on. Uh, on top of having just a cool brand and word of mouth and quality, like that's where I come into play. Made sure the quality was good and made sure the designs were unique. I love it. Quality, being unique. And you just heard him dive into some background thoughts, some things that can help everyone out there tuning in today when it comes to their marketing plan knowing their audience and finding your niche. So thank you so much, Yorgi, for including all of that from your success so far. But before I let you go, which entrepreneur throughout history are you choosing to sit down with dead or alive? Yeah, this probably won't be much of a shocker, but uh, Kobe Bryant. And not just uh, not just because what he brought to the city in LA, but like the ventures he was getting in uh, post-basketball. And then his mindset is what I found most valuable is how you can apply what he was saying to so many things. Like my favorite quote from him is uh, be still. So don't be overreactive. Like understand the feelings that you're feeling now aren't going to be the feelings that you're feeling later. And that has always stuck out to me. I think that's the perfect way to end this show. Everyone out there, there are going to be a ton of ups and downs in entrepreneurship. Remember just to stay true and keep pushing forward. One more time with all the social media, the websites, I'm going to ask you to email me that again at the end of the show but just to copy and paste in the description, but for everyone tuning in still, where can they find you? Uh, they can find uh, mansion, mansion.com. Uh, our Instagram is mansion as well. Uh, blank label.com Instagram, blank label. Uh, those are the two that I'm really worried about. So there you go. <laughs> All right, everyone be sure to go check out his work. And especially if you're out in California, find out how to get these right there in the community. We are at that entrepreneur show and at Vincent day, Lancey, Head to the YouTube channel at Vincent A. Lancey for a video preview of this show. And for now, we are signing off from Florida to California. Yorgi, it's great to see you. Hey, good seeing you, buddy.